All right, now I am so excited about this. I mean, who gets to speak to an astronaut? Huh? Renowned American geo professor and astronaut, Dr. Cyan Proctor, made history by becoming the first female commercial astronaut spaceship pilot and the mission pilot for SpaceX Inspiration 4, the first all civilian orbital mission. Dr. Proctor is currently touring South Africa. She's engaging with school children and the public to share her remarkable journey for space and her passion for science, technology, engineering, and mathematics, or STEM as well as art. She believes that when we solve for space, we also solve issues on Earth. Cyan joins us in studio. And look how good you look. This is so nice. Thank you. You've got to strut that stuff. I mean, this is, this is incredible. We are so excited to have you here. We tracked you down, we found you, and we've got you seated here. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. It's an absolute pleasure. I mean, this is something, we'll talk about what happened and how it all developed, but there's a story behind this lady that is sitting in front of me because Cyan was a little girl running around dreaming of something that, I mean, who would ever believe you're going to go to space? And you did it. I mean, what would you like as a little young girl? I, you know, I always wanted to be a, a pilot and an astronaut and, and mainly an explorer, going around and discovering new things for myself. And, but you know, childhood dreams often don't come true, especially ones where very few people can do that activity. And so I feel so fortunate. It took me a little while, but I eventually made it to space. Yeah, and that's what's so nice about it is that, you know, you, you're a living example that dreams can come true, even though the world is not going in your favor in many which ways, particularly being a woman. Absolutely. It, 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 it was never really done in those days. But your dad was in this kind of industry, wasn't he? He was. I was born on the island of Guam because my dad worked at the NASA tracking station during the Apollo moon missions. So during Apollo 11, he was there when Neil Armstrong took those first steps on the moon. And, uh, and then I was a moon celebration baby. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, that's all you saw, it's all you thought about, it was the toys that you were bought. So this was something that was inculcated into you and you had this dream to want to be a part of it. So, I mean, I can imagine that that was, you would run around and sort of play those kind of games? Absolutely, you know, I, I really was into aviation and, um, you know, watching the NASA and thinking about like, how do I get there? And, but then, you know, things change, you grow up and you realize you, you go off to school. I became a geoscience professor yeah. Yeah. and an explorer traveling my world. And, but then I also got my pilot's license and scuba certified. So I was living the life of an explorer and getting myself what I call flight ready for when opportunity comes. Yeah. And then it did come. But you got the nose first, though. The nose came along, right? The nose came, for sure. And the nose are good. And, and, and that's something we need to, as humans, realize, that when you get the no and you, you had applied to go, I mean, tell us that story. And then, of course, the response was no. Yes, so I was very fortunate to almost be a NASA astronaut. So I applied when I was, I was 39 years old. And I got down to the yes, no phone call out of thousands of candidates. Yeah. But it was a heartbreaking no. And, you know, the way we bounce back from disappointment is just as important as the way we celebrate wins. And so for me, I had to think about not be disappointed in not, in not being selected as an astronaut, but instead celebrate that I was almost a NASA astronaut. And then that enabled me to move forward and continue to have hope. Yeah, and then the hope came true because then you were chosen to be a part of this amazing quartet that went up. I mean, tell us about this because this is, this is a, a moment that, that changed a lot for you. Yes, so in just after COVID in 2021, they announced the first all civilian mission to orbit and that you could win a seat to space. Wow. And, and so, but you had to do a couple of things. So you could either, either donate money to St. Jude Children's Research Hospital because this mission was raising $200 million to try to help end childhood cancer. Or you could show your entrepreneurial spirit and create a two minute Twitter video expressing why they should take you to space. Of course, I did both. I donated to St. Jude Children's Research Hospital, but 
I actually won the prosperity seat, which was me writing a poem expressing why they should take me to space. What, what, why should they take you to space? Do you remember the poem? Yes. I mean, this is so, like something you probably have tattooed I, on you. I, I talk about, it's called Space to Inspire. And yeah. I talk about how we need to create a Jedi space, a just, equitable, diverse, and inclusive space. So I say, uh, J is for justice to ignite the bold. E is for equity to cut past the old. D is for diversity to end the fight. I is for inclusion to try to make it right. A Jedi space to rally behind. A universal force so big it binds. Inspiration to change the world. A new beginning for us to hold. And it goes on and on. And at the end it says, um, so let us drop the mic and close the capsule door, but please make sure Dr. Proctor is on board. <laughs> My space to inspire is what we need. Inspiration for, for all of humanity. Man, that's beautiful. I mean, how could you resist that? Because <laughs> you, you were telling me you, your, your nickname is Leo. Um, it, there, I can yes, see it Leo. there. So not because your star sign is a Leo, but because you managed to merge art and science. Yes. Because you are a scientist, but you're an artist too. I am. My crew members consider me to be a modern day Renaissance woman. And they, so they gave me the call sign Leo for Leonardo da Vinci. And I was so honored to get that call sign because I do do art and science. Oh. And, um, and, you know, thinking about that experience, it really changed me. And so I really want other people to, uh, you know, how do I bring that experience down to earth? Mm -hmm. I call it taking earth light down to earth. And so when I was in space, in this picture right here, I was literally being bathed in earth light. Wow. The light from our planet. And so I came back and I wrote a science book about earth light. Okay, I'm gonna ask you the basics now and I'm gonna throw questions at you okay. because this is something that we never get to experience. What's it like? Like when you, when you leave this planet, because we all sit here and we think we big shots, right? But when you move out of it and you look back, what does it look like? It is the most stunningly beautiful thing you could ever imagine. Our planet is literally radiating color out into space and it's earth light. It is just beaming against the darkness of black. Mm -hmm. And it just makes you feel this love and attachment to our planet. Uh, the analogy is moonlight. Think about the way you feel when there's a full moon rising yeah. and you step out into moonlight. And now imagine you're in low earth orbit and you're being bathed in earth light. Wow. Wow. And it just, you know, it, it just makes you want to go back and experience it again and again. How, how long were you gone for? I was there for three days. Three days. So you were out for three days, but I mean, the preparation that goes into it is massive. Six months. So yeah, six <laughs> months for three days, but it kind of doesn't weigh up, but it does because hopefully it's not the last time. But I mean, the kind of preparation that you go through, because this is not, it's not something that anybody can embark on. I mean, Correct. firstly, you've got to have this huge passion to want to do it. But there are obviously so many other criteria that you need to meet. So talk to us about that. Like, what is it that you need or anybody out there needs to follow in your footsteps? Well, the first thing is, you know, a passion, a passion for exploration and, and wanting to go and do something extraordinary. Would you go to space? No, I'll be honest <laughs> with you. I mean, I've got a lot of dreams, but going to space has been one of them. That's yes. why I'm living vicariously through you. <laughs> well, exactly. So one of it is that having that passion to want to go and exactly. experience this, but then also being trained. You have to, you know, to be the mission pilot. You know, I have my pilot's license. I'm scuba certified. I'm not afraid of heights. Uh, you know, you just want, you've got to be an explorer and to be able to take on this type of endeavor. But for any of the kids out there that are listening and they're like, wow, one day I want to do this, that opportunity is coming down the pipeline really quickly. And, and so as commercial space has opened up, in the last three years, the youngest person to go to space was 18. The oldest person to go to space was 91. Wow. We're flying all kinds of different people to space now. So there is access and opportunity. Uh, but the foundation of that is education, yeah. STEM, science, technology, engineering, and math. But you can't have STEM without the arts because it is creativity and imagination that leads to innovation. Yeah, and that's, and that's the reality. And I think that's, I mean, 
you know, in a nutshell, that's pretty much so what you're doing here is that you're, you, you're in this visit engaging with students, doing interactive sessions, ensuring that, you know, you, you get to speak about the importance of this. I mean, is it your first time to South Africa? It is my first is. time to South Africa, and I'm having a fantastic time. Good. I have to thank the, you know, I'm a U.S. State Department science envoy, but I'm here sponsored by Living Maths, and they're taking me all around, both with the embassy and the State Department, but also with Living Maths to schools and having outreach events every single day, and I'm loving every minute of it. I don't blame you. I mean, it, it, it is something different, and I promise you, we, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a country that just, we, we, lap, we lap up knowledge. I mean, we get people like you coming in and actually just giving us and sharing your knowledge. It's, it is a gift that we cannot actually explain to you, so it's, it's so wonderful. You've got a whole bunch of books, which I'm gonna I'll touch on in a second, but I, I wanna ask you, I mean, when you, when you get out of space, and obviously you explain to us about those beautiful colors, that really hit you from Earth. I mean, I see the blues, I see the whites, I see a lot of things there. And I mean, tell me you didn't cry. Oh, I cried. Did you cry? <laughs> you but, cannot but help can but you cry. cry. You can. Okay, so you got tears that come you, down. Like, I didn't like full on tears, but my eyes welled up. Okay, okay. <laughs> Where you're looking, you're looking at the Earth. And keep in mind, it's interesting because you're inverted to the Earth. But so when you go up into this giant window and you look up, the Earth's above you. And you can't help but just feel overwhelmed by the, the beauty in front of you. And like you said, all of those colors, the blue of the sky and the white of the clouds, that's all Earth light. Yeah. That's how our, our planet takes sunlight and it transforms it into Earth light. Yeah. And Earth light is life. Yeah, it's beautiful. Do you think we're alone out here? I was looking. I didn't because see I'm looking anything. at your shoes. <laughs> because I'm looking at your shoes. It's kind of you did those, right? Yes, I have. This is these are my art shoes. Okay, those are your art shoes. So they looks like aliens to me, but you were looking. You didn't see anything. I hey? was looking, <laughs> and uh, but you know you always you, you can't find it if you're not looking. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but I didn't see anything, so I'm I'm still looking. Okay, first hand experience. <laughs> it's a first hand experience. So the books that you've actually got. So you've got a coloring in book. Yes, so um, when I came back from space, I created a space coloring journal, which is both a journal with activities for students, but also a coloring book so mm -hmm. that you can be creative and thoughtful in trying to get yourself light ready for whatever your purpose is. Amazing. And then I wrote a science book called Earth Light, and I never thought I would ever write a science book, yeah. but I was so moved by having all of this Earth Light on my face yeah. that I, I just had to come back and share it with everyone. You have to. I mean, this is something that not even a handful of people have experienced, and you're one of them, and that's what's so beautiful about it. I, I, I have to leave with a, a, a end off with a message because, of course, August here in South Africa is a very big month for women. Mm -hmm. um, we know there's International Women's Day, but we have a Women's Month here in South Africa. Um, and, and you have really broken down paths for women. You have set the example. You are a person where we look at a television screen and we listen to you and think, man, if she can do it, I can do it. And Absolutely. if you can't see a person, you can never aspire to something. So you are something people aspire to. What is your message to young girls and to older women at the moment in life? Absolutely, if you can see it, you can be it. And my message is it's all about, when I talk about space to inspire, which is my motto, it's not about outer space, it's about this space, the space that makes you, you. This is the most unique space that will ever exist. And this is your space to inspire and how you use it matters. So I wanna encourage all the young girls out there and the seasoned women that to use your space to inspire yourself and those around you. And that's by following your passion and investing in lifelong learning. Mm -hmm. I, you know, I had to become a mission pilot at 51 years old and I'm a geoscientist. And so to become a mission pilot means that I really became a systems engineer in a very short time period. Yeah. And, but I told myself that you can learn anything at any age. And so if you still have those hopes of doing something, even if you're an older, older woman, yeah. go after it and pursue it because you can still do it. I I'm living it. proof that you can still do it. You really can. Um, that at the end of the day, 
you can walk on the moon. And I hope that's one of your dreams. Oh, absolutely. That's I would love to be a future moonwalker. Imagine. That would be just amazing. I can't. Is, is your dad still around, by the way? No, my dad passed away when I was 19 years old. Okay. So he never got to see me become Dr. Proctor yeah. or, you know, experience Earthlight. But I brought, you know, memorabilia. My dad got Neil Armstrong's autograph after he came back from the moon, thanking him for his help. And I brought that to space with me. That's beautiful, absolutely beautiful. Well, we are so proud of you. Thank you for stopping by. We honestly can't thank you enough. It's just, it's, it's, it's so important for people to dream because they do come true. They do come true and they, you're living proof. They absolutely do. Thank so you. to everybody out there, let your earth light shine. Thank you for having me. So I am Proctor. Wonderful having her here in studio with us, renowned American geoprofessor and astronaut, the first female commercial astronaut spaceship pilot and the mission pilot for SpaceX, inspiration for and the first all-civilian orbital mission. Thank you, thank you, thank you.